Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So right here we have one of the most anticipated phones of the year from Samsung, the Galaxy A52, which is the sequel to last year's mid-range A51, which sold incredibly well, mainly because it was delivering a lot of big specs just below that $400 price target. So that's a very appealing phone, but here the sequel, the A52, does even more. And if you're looking at this phone next to, for example, the S21, you'll see that on a lot of scales, it delivers very similar specs. You're getting the IP67 water resistance rating, you're getting a high refresh rate, 90 hertz on here, six and a half inch display, 4,500 milliamp hour battery. So it's gonna be lasting a long time. And overall, I mean, on paper, it's a really impressive phone. So now that I actually have it in my hands here, I've been testing this out for a little while now, and I wanna talk a little bit more about how those specs actually translate to the actual experience. Because like I said in my previous video with the A72, a lot of phones out there sometimes promise big specs, especially in the mid-range price category, but when you start using them, they start falling short in weird areas. And so after using this for a while, I really wanna talk about that, whether or not this is a good buy. Uh, and so I wanna start off with just the feel of this phone. I, again, I mentioned this with the A72, and this is a very similar aesthetic on the back. I really like it. I like how slim the phone is. It feels really nice in your hand. I know it's a plastic back, which at a mid-range price category, a lot of them are plastic backs, but even in the flagship category, some people really start to like plastic backs even more than glass backs. And so the more I'm using phones like this one, the more I realize that a plastic back in many ways is substantially better. And personally, I'm starting to prefer that. So this one, for example, you're not gonna get any fingerprints on this. That's a huge positive compared to so many flagships with the glass back. Uh, that just are fingerprint magnets. This one, you can touch anything you want, rub the back of this phone, and in any light, you won't see any fingerprints. So that's a huge positive here. Uh, you also still have that IP67 water resistance rating. The design is more flexible, so you can have a really nice smooth curve up to the camera bump. It's a really slim camera bump as well, so another positive there. Uh, and, and really the big one is that I'm not worried about this cracking. I know most glass doesn't really chip or crack because it is Gorilla Glass, but this one with plastic is just a little bit more durable and uh, I really like it. So the design of this phone, I mean, we'll do a physical tour here so you can see the rest of it, but I overall, I'm very happy with the feel of this phone, the design of this phone, and that water resistance rating, I know I keep saying it, but that was a big thing that a lot of mid-range phones were missing last year, that the A52 and 72 finally added. So looking at this phone, let's go around, uh, starting off with the back, you see we have four different colors here. This one is, I think they called Awesome Violet. I'll show you the colors on the screen. And so they're all a little bit more on the pastel side of colors, but again, it'd be very easy to put a case on this or, or get a skin for this or really do whatever you want uh, to make this phone however you want. Uh, we It looks like you have four cameras on the back. The bad news is you don't have four cameras on the back. You really have two cameras on the back and then two gimmicks. I mean, I used to say that they were cameras and just not good ones, but I'm just trying to tell it how it is now. They're just gimmicks trying to get you to buy this phone. You have a depth camera, which you absolutely don't need, and you know you don't need it because the flagships don't have it. And the second thing is a macro camera. Again, something that is completely useless. It just looks like a camera on the back, uh, and and you're never gonna use it. But we'll get it, I'll show you, we'll get into a camera test later in this video, and I'll show you what that camera is actually capable of. The good news is the other two cameras are actually impressive. So we have a 64 megapixel wide angle camera, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. Both of those are very functional. I'll test those out later on in the video, uh, but we don't actually have a telephoto lens on here. Not a big drawback. That's probably my least used lens anyway. So I was happy with that choice. Um, if they're gonna cut out one camera, that's the one to cut out, but I just would rather have that than a macro and a depth camera. Looking around this phone on the top, we really don't have much. We have a microphone there. Uh, and next to that, we have our SIM tray. As you can see, is either dual SIM or you can put a SIM and an SD card in here. So you do have expandable storage. I believe up to one terabyte in here, a massive amount of storage. And I would honestly never use that on a phone because it does come with 128 gigabytes already on board. So that expandable storage, very useful if you want it. Moving over to the right side, just like every other Samsung phone, we have our volume rocker right above the side key, uh, which you can remap. It's your power button, your Bixby key, whatever you want it to do, open your camera. You can remap that within settings. Looking at the bottom of this phone, we have our speaker. I'll get into a full speaker test in a second. That is next to our USB Type-C port for data transfer and whatever you wanna do with that. It's also supporting fast charging or actually 25 watt fast charging. It doesn't come with a, a super fast charger in the box. It comes with an adaptive fast charger. So a little bit slower, but regardless, 
uh, allowing fast charging on here so you can go out and buy your own fast charger is really nice because it doesn't support wireless charging in the back. I don't think that's a big deal. It's a mid-range phone. You can't expect everything on there and removing wireless charging, that's fine in my book. 25 watt fast charging is still really great to have. We have a microphone next to that. And of course we have that headphone jack right there. A big thing because as these phones are getting more and more impressive, the A52, the A72, they're really starting to get more enticing when you're looking at the flagship phones versus these. This is a very capable phone and having that headphone jack is a big plus that we're not seeing in any of the flagship phones out there. So I know a lot of people would definitely be interested in having that. Looking at the front of this, we have a six and a half inch display and this display really packs a punch. Very, very impressive. So very bright, very colorful. It goes up to 800 nits, which as far as a mid-range phone goes is very bright. I'm able to film this very easily outside as you can see here and you can see it in broad daylight. Now it's not quite as bright as flagships. For example, uh, a lot of flagships go up to maybe 1100 to 1200 nits. So slightly less bright, but again, this is very competitive at that mid-range price. This also has a 90 hertz refresh rate, so you're going to have a really smooth screen. It's not 120, but to be, re to be honest, it, it's really hard to tell the difference between 90 and 120. It's very easy to tell the difference between 90 and 60. This feels way, way smoother than a 60 hertz display. Uh, this also is Super AMOLED and it is a Full HD Plus display, so really a great display overall for a mid-range phone. Uh, and I mean, at this price, it's gonna be hard to find something something that competes with that. On the top, something you'll notice, especially when the screen is off, uh, is the metal ring around the selfie camera. It's a 32 megapixel selfie camera, which we'll test out, but you'll see that here, that is very distracting. I mean, when your phone's on, it's not especially annoying and, and I'm sure you get used to it, but when the phone's off, I just always notice that. On the bottom of the screen, the other thing, again, this display really packs a lot. The bottom has an in-screen fingerprint sensor. And as I mentioned before, with the A72, it's pretty fast and responsive. I think it's a little bit too low on the screen. I end up reaching my thumb down pretty far uh, and it just works really well from my experience. It's something that if you've never used one of these, it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but I've been using Samsung phones for several years now with the fingerprint sensor on the screen. And so I'm very used to it. And it's very fast and responsive. It does a great job, honestly. On the outside, this phone has a lot of great things going for it. One thing that is not going for it is actually the haptics. The, the vibration on here is really feeling pretty cheap. It's relatively strong, but at the same time, anytime uh, you end up using this, if it's vibrating for a phone call, a text message, or any kind of just touch feedback on here, if you have that enabled, it just feels and sounds really, really cheap. The haptic motor on here was far from impressive. Uh, and actually I just disabled it altogether. Now, something I'm especially interested in with mid-range phones is actually the cameras. We know that flagships typically take great photos, but mid-range phones are really a mixed bag. It's, it's hit or miss. Some of them are really great. Some of them are absolutely terrible. And this one, just because it has a lot of cameras, doesn't necessarily mean it'll take great photos. But let's get into a camera test now, uh, as well as a speaker test to see how well the cameras and speakers perform. So I took a few specific photos to test out different aspects of the camera and you can see, I mean, it's golden hour, but you get a lot of detail, a lot of color, uh, really good sharpness in this pine tree. And then here you can see a nice natural blur when the subject's close, although it is a little bit noisy in the background. Here we're seeing a lot of really nice sharp details in the lines on the power line. Uh, and then here is some great dynamic range. Obviously that's a very dark shadow in real life. Uh, so it really lifted it up well. We can go into 2X digital zoom. It's a little bit noisy, a little bit less detailed here as you'd expect. But for the sunset photo, I thought this looked really good, honestly. Um, it didn't have a ton of dynamic range there, but you're still getting you know, enough detail. It still looks decent. Uh, but when you get to 10X digital zoom, that's the max it allows you to do. It really becomes much less usable. The ultra wide lens honestly looked pretty good, really consistent color and lighting everywhere. Uh, you see a little bit of a glow around subjects uh, from the HDR effect on here, and you'll see a little tiny bit of warping on the edges, but overall it does a pretty good job of keeping things looking real. The rear lens had this strange issue when I held the camera relatively close, not that close, uh, but it missed focus a couple times until I finally got it here. Live focus mode, I thought looked really good. It, it really nailed the edges on this one. And then the selfie camera, I think also did a pretty decent job. Uh, so it didn't really over soften too much. It softened my face a little bit more in live focus mode, but again, it hit the edges pretty well. Uh, looking at the macro lens, this is really completely useless in my opinion because it really doesn't have any kind of autofocus and it's only five megapixels. 
Okay, so now taking a look at the video, I'm just walking and this is the primary rear lens. Uh, it's doing a pretty decent job. This is golden hour right now, so uh, you're gonna have really great lighting everywhere, but good color, pretty good dynamic range as we look around. And you'll see that there is definitely a decent amount of uh, a detail in everything. It's a little bit over sharpened in some of the trees, in my opinion. Uh, you can obviously see there's a ton of trash out here. It's really disgusting. I'm on a power line right now. But we can zoom out to the ultra wide lens. And here, here's a little drawback here. When we pinch to zoom out, it just all the way to 0.5x zoom to the ultra wide lens. So you're not going to seamlessly zoom between them, but you can jump between them. Uh, again, it's going to look a little, it's just going to tip over like you can see right here. But we can zoom in from here to 2x zoom all the way up to, I believe, 10x zoom which is still surprisingly sharp and steady. Wow, that's, that's actually really impressive. Um, it's holding very steady on the subject, and then we can seamlessly go back to the wide angle. So I'm pretty impressed with the video quality on this one, but again, you guys can leave a comment. Let me know how this looks and sounds to you, uh, but let's see how it does with skin tones. Okay, so this is what it looks and sounds like with a human subject in front of the camera. You guys can leave a comment and let me know how this video looks to you, how it sounds to you. Uh, again, we don't have a microphone, like really, prominent on the back but again let me know what you guys think of this all right now this is the selfie camera shooting 4k 30 honestly it's doing a pretty decent job i'm kind of impressed it's golden hour so again this is definitely really good lighting uh but regardless leave a comment let me know what you think of this it, how it looks and sounds if i turn around maybe uh, some slightly tougher lighting for it it's still doing a pretty good job honestly i'm pretty impressed with this if i walk around it seems to be stable enough maybe not quite as stable as the rear camera but as far as a, a mid-range selfie camera goes I really can't be too disappointed in this one. So for a quick speaker test, I'm just gonna play a YouTube video here. So you're obviously not getting a ton of bass, but it sounds pretty just good. Just 10 miles south of Yellowstone is Grand Teton National Park. And although the two parks are side by side. Talking about what's under the hood with this model right here, this is the A52 just regular, it's not the 5G model. And so that means you're obviously not getting 5G on here, which is not a problem. A lot of mid-range phones don't have 5G yet anyway. And to be honest, 4G is plenty fast in most situations. So I had no problem with that. It has 128 gigabytes on the base model and there are a bunch of different variations. This one right here has six gigabytes of RAM and this is running the Snapdragon 720G processor, which I know Snapdragon has a lot of numbers in, in their processor names, but this one is honestly not especially fast. I was really not that impressed with that. At this price, it's definitely competitive. It, it's, holding, it's holding its own. The A72 is running the same processor and, and that phone, I feel like, should have a faster processor. But with A52, this is definitely passable. It's not gonna be the fastest out there, but it definitely gets the job done. You can see if I'm opening apps, uh, you might take an extra beat to get them open, but it, it, it does the job. This is also running the latest One UI and Android 11. Uh, so really no complaints under the hood with this phone. It, it packs the specs that you're really looking for, but it doesn't exceed my expectations in any one of them. So overall guys, what are my thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy A52? Well, I think you can summarize it like this. Samsung did a great job on the outside of this phone. On the back, it looks really nice, smooth plastic finish, a bunch of cameras, slim camera bump, and a really nice size for a phone. Slim, feels nice in your hand, and of course the display in the front also looks really great, 90 hertz, very bright, very vibrant. And I, again, they just did a great job on the outside of this phone. The IP67 water resistance rating is a welcomed upgrade for a mid-range phone. But other than that, there are some drawbacks. Of course, the processor's not the fastest. The cameras are good, but they didn't add the telephoto lens and instead they have a macro lens and a depth camera, which are completely useless. And of course, the other thing are that the haptics on here just feel really cheap. But of course, the slogan wasn't awesome haptics, awesome processor. It's awesome screen, awesome camera, and long-lasting battery life. And that's the slogan of the A series. And the A52 right here definitely delivered on the awesome screen. 90 hertz refresh rate is exactly what I wanted to see on a mid-range phone. It's bright, it's vibrant, six and a half inches. Yes, there's a bezel around there, but I think it's an awesome screen. The camera is a little bit more up for debate. I wish they would rather, I would rather see them get rid of those two useless cameras. And I mean, personally, I would rather just have one really good camera, but having the ultra wide camera is also a nice thing to add there. So you guys can leave a comment below or you can go over to Twitter and check out the photos and let me know what you think of the cameras here. If you think they're awesome cameras or not, and then the third thing is the long lasting battery life. Of course, 4,500 milliamp hours is more than enough. I, I'm very happy with that. And that would honestly be an awesome battery on a lot of flagships out there. So seeing that on a mid range phone, 
Overall, the Galaxy A52 at this price, I think it's a fantastic phone. I think it's a very easy buy if you're into the Samsung ecosystem, if you really want to have a phone with a larger display, a better display, and overall a better looking phone uh, for this price. Of course, there's a lot of competition out there. If you want a really fast processor, maybe the iPhone SE is a good option. If you really want one very good camera and even a lower price, the Pixel 4a is a great option, but if you're looking for a well-balanced flagship light, if you want to think of it as that, at around $400 or even less on sales, then the Galaxy A52, I think it's a pretty nice phone. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. As always, leave a comment and let me know what you think of the Galaxy A52. I'm Michael Bryan, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.